Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. So, in this video we're going to be talking about pulse chain game theory. Remember, if you like this kind of not only hex quantitative and technical analysis, but also pulse chain analysis on this new Ethereum fork that's coming up very, very soon, leave a thumbs up, be subscribed by the end of the video if you aren't already, and let's go ahead and talk about pulse chain. All right, so we have a video comparing the pulse chain launch to the ether launch back in 2014, right? A lot of analogies there, so definitely check that video out first if you haven't already. I'll leave a link here for that. And at the end of the day, again, there are very, very similar launch mechanics. So here we, we do our best to outline a little bit what the Ethereum launch looked like. Well, there was a sacrifice phase where you could sacrifice your Bitcoin for your Ether. It was a 42 day launch phase. And there was a time bonding curve of approximately 1.5x where the ramp went from 2000 ETH per BTC down to 1337 ETH per BTC. Over the course of these 42 days, it was a smooth curve. And similarly, you'll be able to sacrifice from any list of coins, so not just BTC or ETH, from a list of coins to be credited for your pulse, right? And you'll by sacrificing coins, you're essentially giving yourself a sort of like a share, right? A credit to be able to claim your free coins later. So it's not a purchase, right? You're not purchasing coins, you're not trading coins. You're just sacrificing coins for credit to be able to claim coins later. There's a difference. And this phase will be 30 days as opposed to 42 days, so a little shorter. And again, from any list of coins, you'll be able to sacrifice for pulls. There will be a bonding curve. Now we're told that this time bonding curve will be of 2x and not 1.5x like the Ether launch was. Now, what exactly does this mean? This leads us into our game theory. Okay? And ex excuse uh, the scratch here. I got into a little scuffle with a Bitcoin maxi the other day. Um, but let's talk about the game theory here on Pulse, right? What happens if the coin you're sacrificing moves in price? Because assuming. Let's, okay, let's do a simple, simple scenario. Let's just say you're sacrificing stable coins, right? USDC. That makes things super simple. That makes the math so simple. I'm actually so happy I thought about this because the math was getting really complicated earlier. So let's say you're you're going to sacrifice $1,000, 1000 USDC. And if that's the case, if you're sacrificing a stable coin, then the game theory says you are definitely, certainly better off aping in on day one. Right, sacrificing your thousand USDC on on day one because of the time bonding curve. Because at the end of the thirty day launch phase, your stable one thousand USDC will only get you half the number of coins at the end of the phase compared to the beginning of the phase. Right now, is there any way this this could be offset? Right? Yes. And how is that? Well. Let's say you're sacrificing a non-stable coin. Let's say you're sacrificing, let's say you're sacrificing Ethereum. You're sacrificing your Ether. And even though you're getting half the number of coins at the end of, of, the, um, of the launch phase as compared to the beginning, well, what if price of what you're sacrificing doubles? Well, you missed out on, let's say, 50% because of the time bonding curve. But you're going to multiply that by, let's say, a 2x if the price of your Ether doubles. So you're essentially getting the exact same number of coins. However, you're betting on the fact that Ethereum will go up more than 2x during the time you have a you know, 0.5x uh, bonding curve or a 2x bonding curve, I guess. So you're looking at ratios here, right? If there's any way that you'd be better off sacrificing your coins near the end of the sacrifice phase, that would only, only be assuming a bonding curve, a time bonding curve of 2x, you would only be better off sacrificing later if whatever coin you're sacrificing pumps harder than 2x, because then you'd be offsetting the less number of coins with more USD value, which would get you credit to more pulse in the future. I hope that makes sense. Um, my camera's kind of running low, so if it cuts off in the middle of it, I am going to continue with the video. Have I been doing the face tracker this whole time? Oh Lord, I have been. Awesome. Pulse chain. There's little we know about it. We do know that it will launch in a few days, or, or so we're told, right? Uh, it'll launch in a few days. But again, there are 
that's really what I wanted to get at in this video was that specific game theory point that the only way you'll be able to kind of game the 2x bonding curve in time is if your coin that you're sacrificing more than 2x is in USD value over the course of that time. Then you'd be better, better off sacrificing later, if that makes sense. All right, so with that said, there is also a volume bonding curve. However, that's time independent, right? You have these two independent bonding curves that multiply by each other, where the volume one, if you've already decided how much USD you're putting in, you're, you're pretty much set on that bonding curve, right? Let's say you're gonna sacrifice again your 1,000 USDC, then on the volume bonding curve, you're gonna be lumped with the 1,000 US, uh, US dollar value, guys, if that makes sense, uh, because that, that's gonna be ordered at the very end of the sacrifice phase, this sacrifice set, so to speak, those numbers of how much USD value each item sacrifice that will be ordered at the end of it. And I don't know actually what the multiple is on that bonding curve, 2x, 3x, but that's the one you have to worry about less because again, once you've decided how much USD value you're gonna put in, you're pretty much set on that bonding curve. Now there's some ca caveats, right? Like, like we were talking about, if you're to wait and let's say you're your coin that you're gonna sacrifice appreciates maybe more than 2x, let's say it moves up 10x, then you'd be better off waiting for that 10x in price to actually sacrifice a larger amount of USD value. And again, if you're sacrificing a non-stable coin, then you're not really set on what USD value you're sacrificing. So in that sense, if you do wait and your coin pumps and somehow you got lucky and you get credited to be able to claim more coins because your USD value of your coin pumped, um, camera just died, then you would also be obviously ordered in the, let's say your coin uh, 10x, you put in a thousand USD in your coin 10x. Then at that point, you would be, you would have, let's say 10,000 US dollars. And then you would be obviously ordered with the 10,000 US dollar guys. So if you really want to get the optimal play, yeah, the camera just died by the way. Uh, if you really want to get the optimal play, then you you pretty much have to speculate on the price of whatever coin you're sacrificing. You would have to speculate on what is going to be the best performing cryptocurrency in this list of available coins to sacrifice or allowed coins to sacrifice, which is going to be the top performer and when exactly is it going to have its peak? That and that, that's really tough, right? Because if you knew that, then you'd be you'd be a master trader. However, if somehow you get lucky and you do time that perfectly, then you get ahead on the volume bonding curve because you're sacrificing more USD value. You get ahead on the time bonding curve because your coin essentially did more than a 2x during the time where the bonding curve is only 2x. So that's essentially what you'd have to do to, to play this absolutely perfectly. So that said, again, camera died so you can't see my face, but here are some things you guys can talk about if you go to t.me forward slash pulse chain com that's the official telegram group for pulse chain throwing your ideas there because we are probably honestly just days away from launching the sacrifice phase and probably only a month or two away from actually going live with mainnet right and you can put your input there there are certain things that the community still needs input on that the founder himself still needs input on such things as liquidity mining, right? How do you provide incentive for liquidity providers to provide liquidity on this new project? So that a, a DAO, right, a treasury, like what is that gonna look like? What percentages are allocated for the liquidity mining? And so, so there are certain things, certain details that some input would still be appreciated on. And the official Telegram group, again, is this, t.me forward slash pulse chain com. I'll leave a link to that in the description below. About 13,000 members right now. And the voice chat is usually full of 50 plus people at a time, which is really cool. Um, again, check that out if you haven't already. I'm probably going to make this video a bit shorter, cut it off soon, just because the video died. I'm going to have to charge this. Uh, but before we do that, I do want to clarify a couple things that in my previous video, I mistakenly referred to Ether as an ERC-20 when... It's not, <laughs> it's just not. And again, my bad, if that doesn't clarify the fact that I'm not a developer, well, there you go. Now you know, I'm not a not a developer and I didn't, I really didn't know. If we're just being real, I, no excuses, I, I didn't know. ETH wasn't an ERC-20. So 
let's actually go ahead and amend the statement we made, which it's still, it's still pretty impressive, right? And what am I talking about? Well, Nomics is kind of tweaking out, by the way. Ethereum logo isn't showing, Hex logo isn't showing. This weird ass coin with $200 volume is top three. <laughs> What's going on? Uh, I did want to amend my statement though, that Bitcoin has its own chain. Ethereum has its own chain. It's not an ERC-20. Uh, Tether is, however, an ERC-20. The only contention with Tether being the top ERC-20 though, is the fact that it's a stable coin. And that these guys that allegedly have cash reserves for the amount of Tether in circulation is, uh, I don't want to get too much into that. I don't want to be the guy spreading Tether FUD, but let's just say it's a stable coin. So market cap itself on a coin that can kind of just be printed at the treasury isn't necessarily indicative of leadership on this metric. I hope that makes sense. So again, None of these are ERC-20s other than Tether because, again, ADA, BNB, Doge, XRP, they all have their own mainnet, I believe. And so at the end of the day, the top ERC-20, I guess you could argue, is Tether. But besides stable coins, other than stable coins, the top ERC-20 right now is currently Hex, which I think is pretty impressive. And look at that. It's green in a sea of red other than this, again, this strange coin, which I don't even want to mention because look at that volume. Like... What even is this? Come on, Nomics. <laughs> I love you, Nomics. Fix your stuff, please. Yeah, so just wanted to clear that up, that I do make mistakes. I'm not perfect. I had no idea, but look at that. We're learning together. ETH itself isn't an ERC-20, but at the end of the day, you know, Hex is the second highest valued ERC-20, and if you don't count stable coins, well, then it's the top. Again, check out PulseChain.com if you haven't. A lot of input we can still use in the group. Uh, I might be going live tomorrow, a tentative live stream tomorrow. I don't even want to mention the, the name of the person, but potential live stream tomorrow. That should be fun. If so, it would be happening around 7 p.m. Eastern time, 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. So stay tuned for that. Be subscribed by now. Definitely, if you haven't already, leave a thumbs up. If you do like these kind of vids on Hex, Pulse Chain, even Ethereum, Bitcoin, etc., all of crypto, I like to be not a maximalist on any given coin, but rather an opportunity maximalist here where let's be real. Some of these have been opportunities of a lifetime. And so to think that pulse chain might not be, might be kind of silly, right? This thing is big. The founder has a great track record and it, great fundamentals on, on this new chain coming up. Really exciting times. Leave a comment below what you think of this whole ordeal. When do you think we're going to launch today, tomorrow? Is it going to be another week too? Love to hear your thoughts on that. Again, I'll sign off right here with that. Appreciate you watching and I'll catch you in the next video. Peace.